I've always loved documentaries, not just startup documentaries, but all kinds of documentaries. I just love real stories. Today I'm going to talk about the best startup documentaries, the best real stories about building a startup. Some bad news here, actually most of the startups in these documentaries, they end up dying. Those are the odds when building a startup, and it sort of also makes a better story. This is Raw Startup. I'm the founder of Avino, the world's largest wine app and wine community with almost 60 million users all over the world. It has been a long ride and I know it can be a rough one, just like we see in these documentaries. But I do think these documentaries can really inspire you as a founder. One more promise here in the beginning, no more Theranos, no more WeWork. We've heard that story too many times now. I'm looking for some newer stories, some stories you might not have heard before. We're making a top five of the best documentaries about founders and startups. A cool thing here is that most of the documentaries are available on the big platforms like YouTube, Netflix, or other platforms. I will link to them in the description. And thanks a lot to the Raw Startup community on LinkedIn for helping me build the big, big list of startup documentaries. We managed to build a list of 21 startup documentaries. This is obviously my personal list, but in the end of the video, I will rank them according to IMDB score so we can see what others think too. Obviously, if you disagree, please let me know in the comments. I really wanna know. Here we go, let's get that list started. Number five, something ventured. Silicon Valley is incredibly important for the world of startups, and I'm not just talking startups in Silicon Valley, I'm talking startups all over the world. I've lived there for many years and it really is a special place for any tech founder. It is the cradle of venture capital more than 50 years ago. And still today, no place in the world has as many startups as Silicon Valley and no place in the world has as many tech giants as Silicon Valley. Before all this happened more than 50 years ago, there was really no money in Silicon Valley, no venture capital in Silicon Valley at all. All the money was back with the bankers in New York. Something Venture tells a story about venture capital, how it came about all those years ago. You will learn the story about the famous Treacherous Eight, who were the first to really break out of a big company and kickstart the Silicon Valley ecosystem. Maybe even the first to build a really venture-backed startup. It is quite a fascinating story. They broke out of the company and started Fairchild Semiconductors, and they basically built the first silicon chips and thereby named Silicon Valley Silicon Valley. To give you an idea about how important these eight were, some of the people from these eight actually ended up later founding both AMD and Intel. And we're kind of lucky here, the full documentary is available on Vimeo, link in the description. It's a 10 year old documentary, so it is a little bit slow, but the content is good. Number four, fire fraud. This story is just plain madness. This is a story of a music festival, but not just any music festival. It was supposed to be the best, the most luxurious music festival ever to be had, and even on an island in the Bahamas. On top of that, full of models. It didn't play out quite like that though. The Fire Festival was founded by Billy McFarlane and rapper Ja Rule. Billy turned out to be a total con artist and nothing was really like it was supposed to be. One of the fascinating things with this documentary is that it actually has Billy in it. He is featured in it. Although most of what he says is BS, it is fascinating to have him participate in the documentary. I guess they must have paid him well. One of the reasons why this festival got so much attention was because it was promoted by the biggest stars on social media. We're talking people like Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, Haley Baldwin, and many, many others. I would go as far as saying that these people were incredibly good at promoting the festival and getting the right endorsements. But they had no idea how to put on a massive event like the Fire Festival and obviously no idea about how to run a business. It ended really, really bad, and people even went to the festival, but there wasn't much there. You have to watch the documentary to see it all, but I promise you it went south in a really bad way. This particular quote gives you an idea about how delusional Billy was. This was said on the day of the festival opening. V1 has failed, so how we're solving this is, first, all guests have been taken home safely on planes. Next, everybody is being refunded for their ticket purchase and then everybody is getting a comp ticket to Fire Festival 2018. V1? I mean, what is this, a piece of software? This guy is totally delusional. In March 2018, Billy pleaded guilty to all kinds of stuff, and as of this recording, Billy is still in prison, but on his way to a halfway house. Watch this documentary, it's really, really entertaining. There are a few documentaries about the Fire Festival, but I think this is the best one. It's just rare to see things fail at such a scale. So here's one learning. If you want to do a music festival, you should probably include some people that know how to put on a music festival. Surprise. 
Number three, E-Dreams. Okay, this is an old one, but it's still relevant, and let me tell you why in a second. The documentary follows Joseph Park and Yong Kang as they build Cosmo.com, one of the first delivery companies that could deliver within one hour. The year is 1999, and they raise a lot of money. I'm talking $280 million. Back in 1999, that was unheard of. They built Cosmo to 3,000 employees in 11 cities in the US. Still, it was 1999, so you can imagine what happened, but I'm not gonna spoil anything. What I like about the documentary is that we get pretty close. We see a lot of the conversations and drama, and it's not boring. There is another very similar documentary called Startup.com. I think it's almost as good, but doesn't get quite as close as this one. They're both on YouTube, so do watch that one too. eDreams is an old documentary, and you can tell by the quality, but it is relevant today. It is important to remember what happened in 99. We might be looking at something very, very similar today. So there are real learnings to be had. The full documentary is available on YouTube. Link in the description. Number two, Myth and Mogul John DeLorean. This is a Netflix documentary series about John DeLorean, the man who made the DeLorean car that was also made famous from the Back to the Future movies. I mean, the movies were great, but the story behind the man that built and named the car is fascinating too. Don't be disappointed though, there's no time travel. On top of that, I'm not gonna lie, I always wanted a DeLorean. I mean, it is the coolest car ever. Guess what? I finally got one. It's not a big DeLorean. I mean, it is a Lego DeLorean. But I love it. I mean, in the second version of the movie, it could actually fly. It would go like this. Incredible, huh? Back to John DeLorean, and he was a character. He came out of the car industry and was seen as the genius designer and marketer. He grew through the ranks faster than anybody in Detroit. But at some point, he got tired of the old car industry and wanted to build his own car. This is when the fun began. He started building the DeLorean. He started his own new car company, something nobody had done successfully in decades. It doesn't go quite as planned, and DeLorean is a little bit of a flawed person, but his dedication to the company is unlimited. When it comes to raising money, he would do anything, and I mean anything. You'll see all this in the documentary, and without spoiling too much, I can tell you that he was so desperate, he ended up doing a drug deal to raise money. Not something I would recommend. You're goddamn right. Watch it, it is very entertaining. You can find it on Netflix. Okay, we're on top of the list. And before we get to number one, I wanna mention one movie that I wouldn't put on the list. It's a documentary about Vivino, my family, and me. It is called Disrupting Wine and about building Vivino, and especially about the less glamorous side of building a startup. That there is a price to be paid, and the founders are not the only ones paying that price. So is the family and anyone else close to the startup. Obviously, I'm biased, but I do think it came out really, really good. It's got good reviews and ratings, available on Amazon Prime. And now we're at number one. Number one, Indie Game. Indie Game follows the developers behind the games Super Meat Boy and Fez. We go through development and launch with them. Being an independent game developer is not easy. It's a struggle. I mean big time struggle. These guys are just working hard. I mean inhumanely hard. Sure, indie games are a great opportunity these days, Apps have global distributions with the App Store, and games have platforms like Steam that give developers instant global distribution. However, making a successful indie game is very, very difficult. The odds of finishing a game are small, and the odds of success even smaller. You will see crazy passion. I mean, their passion is just at a different level. They work so hard and care so much about their work. Caring about what you do is obviously good. Actually, life would be easier if you didn't care about what you do, but you probably wouldn't get very far. These are emotionally and mentally complicated people. One example of that is when the interviewer asks one of the developers, what would happen if you didn't finish the game? He's very clear, I would kill myself. And it does look like he means it. This just gives you an impression of how much they're into their work. It might not be healthy. This guy finishes his game, so we're all good. I mean, this story is tough to watch at times. I think it starts slow, but 30, 40 minutes in, it really gets more interesting. The final 30 minutes are really fascinating and a lot more uplifting than the rest of the movie. Watch it, it's fascinating. It's available for rent on all the big renting platforms. If you're into games and game development, please make sure you check out my video on Duke Nukem. That's a fascinating story too. And as always, feel free to subscribe. A lot of good stuff here. Now let's take a look at the full list. We're not quite done yet. Let's have a look at what IMDb says. It really didn't change much. Something ventured moved up, but that is it. If you want more content just like this, please consider pressing like and subscribe, and you won't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching Raw Startup. Now stop watching and go build something.